Hey yo. Episode 96. Just inching our way towards 100. God, I wish we started this three years ago, four years ago. I know, ago. why don't we start this years ago? COVID? <gasps> I know, I think about it a lot. Stop. I know. Because we're caught up in some stupid thing. <laughs> That's true. I don't really have anything at the top, let's be honest. Rose, oh, I do. Her story. Oh, well, okay. I have one quick thing because I saw um, someone commented, maybe on YouTube. Well, if it's, I don't know. I don't know where I saw it. The timestamps for us to say when the actual case starts are worthless now that we have ads. Just FYI. Um, because yeah. we don't know which what ad is going to, you know, we don't know where the ad in the beginning is going to be placed or how many. So it it won't mean anything It'll be unless off. there's not one it would be off though so you mm -hmm. get it um so that's why we don't we haven't been doing and everyone's that. ad placement's different like i don't i i seem to always have an ad at the beginning never in the middle like some of oh people. yeah oh yeah and it, yeah it can it can differ for different people you may not have an ad in the beginning but your friend does it so it's it's impossible to do to do the timestamp. sorry yeah. sorry but it's always pretty quick yeah like you know? like this i really don't have anything other than that yeah. All right. Today, I am telling you about John Darwin. Oh, right. You don't know it, though, right? No, but Rebecca's been talking about it this week and was like, just don't Google it. I'm like, I never do. I don't know why you think. Just I because I knew know. about Ashley Reeves. Mm. Now you're all nervous. Well, you can't be trusted. Mm. Sources. The Guardian. Case notes from the trial. BBC. GazetteLive.co.uk. Uh, and The Telegraph. 51-year-old John Darwin and his wife, Anne, lived in Seton Carew, United Kingdom. He was a math and science teacher for 18 years before actually leaving that job and becoming a prison officer at HM Prison Home House, which is a Category C men's prison. That's a quite the switch of a career. It really is. Why? I don't, I don't know. I think he just kind of yeah. got bored of teaching. I don't know. <laughs> wow. In the UK, the level of security is categorized by from A to D. A being highest level of security, D being the lowest level. So being a C prison means lower risk inmates. No murderers yeah. are in here or anything like that. I think they're all, you know, petty crime, drug yeah. charges, whatever. Mm -hmm. And Anne was a doctor's office receptionist. So they both made a modest salary, but actually made some money with their real estate side gig. Since getting married in 1973, they built a pretty cushy property portfolio and had about 12 houses they rented out. They bought one with the address 3 The Cliff in Seton Carew, which is the chicest address I've ever heard. <laughs> oh. Right? Sure. 3 The Cliff. Send it to me at 3 The Cliff. Exactly. And uh -huh. they decided they would make this their primary home. It's a seven-bedroom Victorian-style townhouse, and it overlooks the ocean. But oddly enough, it actually wasn't on a cliff. I street viewed it on Google. Oh. It is beautiful. Well, it sounds again, beautiful. On, yeah, on the ocean, but no cliff. And they also own the one next door for the cliff. Loving it. I know. Um, but I, I don't, at this time, no one was running that one out. They had two sons, 28-year-old Mark and 25-year-old Anthony. Let's go ahead and get the Mark Anthony reference out of the way. <laughs> I, there wasn't going to be a reference, but I just pictured him, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it flashed in your head. Well, yeah, it flashed in my head. Listeners' heads, too. Mark right. Anthony. I know. They were both living elsewhere, so John and Anne were empty nesters and living the dream. John loved kayaking and had a red one he named the Orca, which he took out on the morning of March 21st, 2002. A lot of sources refer to this as a canoe, but I've seen a picture of it. And in America, we at least call it a kayak. I'm not sure if I don't know, yeah. around the world y'all use it interchangeably, but it's a kayak, FYI. Anne went to work, and when she got home, John wasn't there, but she knew he had a night shift at the prison, so it wasn't so she wasn't really worried about it until later that evening when either the prison called her or she called the prison to talk to John. I'm not sure really which one happened, but either way, yeah. they told her that he never made it into work and hasn't called anyone to let them know why. She immediately became worried and around 9.30 p.m. called the police to report her husband missing and a huge search was launched. They searched throughout the night, covering a 62-square-mile area, but couldn't find him or anything. Their neighbor, Howie Rowson, I think that's how you say it, said he saw John taking his kayak, kayak out on the water early that morning, and he was going in the direction of the River Tee, which is one of the busiest shipping channels in the UK, so a kayak wouldn't stand a chance. And they even <laughs> oh thought he God. could have potentially been sucked into a ship's propellers. 
Oh, God. I oh, know. You've seen the Titanic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Those things I are have- big. Uh, uh, yes, it was the mm-hmm. 112th anniversary yesterday. Thank you so much for mentioning it. Oh, you're right. Mm-hmm. Happy 112th anniversary for those who celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> We're thinking of you. We're thinking of you. I the did you thought cry? of that. I cried. Right, just a thing with the tattoo, and I can think we've mentioned it, but I'm just an. Uh, historian when it comes to it i just love it i'm just fascinated by it i do not cry on the anniversary though don't let her fool you so they thought potentially he was in the propeller but either way they resumed their search at 5 a.m the next morning and had six rescue boats a helicopter a search plane and a navy warship so they pulled out all the stops for the search at the time their older son mark was living in london which is about a five-hour drive from Anne, and he dropped everything and rushed home and he said when Anne saw him she collapsed in his arms and cried for hours oh mark called his his younger brother anthony who was actually in canada on holiday or vacation with his girlfriend and he was planning to propose that weekend Mm. how awful is that that is very excited about an engagement and you get the worst news of your life yeah sad obviously with the unexpected turn of events he aborted the proposal plan and rushed home to be with his family john's siblings were there grandparents everyone mark and anthony stayed with Anne for a few weeks because of how worried they were about her all day every day she would just sit and stare at the wall she wouldn't eat she wouldn't drink she wouldn't sleep they tried to make her feel better reminding her that his body has not been found he could very well be alive and he was a very experienced kayaker And could be out there. And it made her hopeful for a second, but I think ultimately she knew better. Plus, she said while he was an experienced kayaker, he never conquered the Eskimo role, which is what you do to get right side up again if your kayak capsizes. I hate. I hate. My first time in a kayak, I was at my (laughs) friend's lake house and they put me in that dumbass skirt, which is that thing that, you know, traps you into a kayak. Traps you. And my dumbass friend from high school, she's like our best friend to, the, to this day. So <laughs> my dumbass friend. she was a dumbass friend, this day. She, she was, was a dumbass, dumbass this, this day, day. And she jumped on my kayak and it flipped. And I had no idea what to do. I panicked. It was I scary. Get right. It was scary. And then that dumb bitch went underwater and pulled the skirt off and saved me. But they all made fun of me and for being dramatic because apparently I was only underwater for like five seconds. But it was terrifying. Oh, Count to five seconds when you're trapped in a death boat underwater. Screw all you. It was scary. I saw the whole thing. And I'm team Rebecca on this one. <laughs> right. It was terrible. Right. So anytime there's a kayak involved, that skirt is staying on land. That skirt's oh, not going my on God. the kayak. I'm, look, I'm not a professional. I'm, I was like in the lake at my leisure. There wasn't a wave inside. I mean, come on. No. Ugh. No one needed that skirt. No one needs but any skirt. For an experienced kayaker, I would think... That dumbass Eskimo roll that everyone can do would be a crucial skill to know. But yeah. What, what do I know? I know right. nothing because I too almost died in one. See, I'm not <laughs> dramatic. No. No, you are not. Search and rescue teams continued to look for him every day for over two months. And in May 2002, police divers were searching a rocky area a few miles away and found his paddle floating. Oh, no. Obviously, not good news. If you're in a kayak without your paddle, you're at mercy of the sea. So not very promising. God, and they're on the ocean. Right. It's not good. Mm -mm. I think after this, the search efforts kind of subsided and pleas to the public for any information were ramped up. A few weeks went by and a portion of his kayak was found. It wasn't the whole thing. It somehow broke, but Anne was able to identify it as John's. And that piece of the kayak became the family's only closure. (gasps) Oh, I know. Sad. I know. At this point, she was just hoping to find his body so they could give him a proper funeral and start moving on. But because they hadn't, she would have she would have days allowing herself like a what if he's out there and become hopeful. Then she would be heartbroken all over again when the reality of how unlikely that is would hit her. It's just, you know, constant gut put, gut punch. Yeah. Then August 2002, over five months later, a body was found off the coast of Hartlepool. I wonder if I'm saying that right. I think I am. Let us know. Let us know. And the police called Anne to come identify it. She, Mark, and Anthony were all going together. But before they did, the liaison officer she was working with on the case called and said they already identified the man and he was not John. Oh. Hmm. 
And Anne apparently lost it. She broke down to the police officer yelling that she just wanted to lay her husband to rest. Like she was disappointed. It wasn't. Yeah, no, I, I, I get yeah. that. On the first anniversary of his disappearance, they had a mini ceremony. Anne threw roses into the sea and kept one by her bed. Her and her sons were having a very hard time. Anthony would spend hours Googling for any bodies that may have been found in this giant ocean. I mean. Uh, just anything to try to help. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. Right. They relied on the public to bring information, which didn't bring shit. So in April 2003, a year after the accident, he's declared legally dead. But think of Anne being in that big house overlooking the ocean all the damn time. Couldn't <gasps> stand it. Right. So in 2006, she told Mark and Anthony she was going to move to Panama. She said it's fun, it's Catholic, and they speak Spanish. Fun and Catholic. Fun, nah. Catholic, and they speak Espanol. I gasped because I thought you were going to say like one day she was looking out at the ocean. <gasps> oh, my just God. Found them. I don't know why. Okay. Damn. So, all right. All right. Adios, Anne. Hola, <laughs> Panama. Luego. She first visited in 2005 and immediately fell in love with it, the people, everything. And as a widow, she needed to start her new life. Good so for she her. Sold, I know. They were supportive, too. She sold a couple of properties and moved down there, I think with like 700,000 pounds. So, yeah. A, wow. good, a nice cushy start of the new life. Um, and again, Anthony, Anthony and Mark fully supported her. And then a year later, in December of 2007, she gets a call from Mark. And it was 1 a.m. in England. So she gets a sinking feeling. She oh picked God. up the phone and immediately asked, why are you calling me this late? And he said, Mom? Oh, my God. I'm sitting here with Dad. No, you're not. Mm -hmm. No, you are not, young man. Yes, he is. And he said, JK, ha ha, and hung up. <laughs> he said, LLL, JK, bye. <sighs> Can you imagine? Mark would never do that. So in 2007, six years after the accident, a disheveled man walked into a police station in the UK and told them he thought he was a missing person. <gasps> he remembered his name was John Darwin and not much else. His very last memory was a cruise he took to Norway in 2000, two years before the accident. And they really did go on a cruise to Norway? Yeah, yeah. Police were able to track down his son since they were still living in the UK. And they came down, and like, Mark and Anthony came down to the police station to identify him, confident it was not him. But when they saw him, they let out a huge, oh my God, and bursted into tears. Holy so emotional. shit. I know. When they called Anne, they were still at the police station, and the cops told her he remembers nothing at all about being missing. Then she spoke to John directly, and she said he sounded a little strange, but it was definitely him. She said, there, there I was, speaking to my husband. It was a day I had always dreamed about, but never believed it would happen. Oh. How bad? Like, you just want to talk to the ones you've lost one, at least one more time, and she got and he's to. he's back. And more than once, he's back. Oh, my God. John went home with Anthony that night while things got sorted out and while Anne prepared to fly back. But within a day, this news was everywhere. Every reporter wanted to talk to John. Not a moment to rest. Anne couldn't even take one day to process all of this before a reporter from the UK knocked on her door in Panama. Oh, damn. His name was David Lee. He was a reporter for The Mirror. Oh, God. Here we go. <laughs> British tabloids are Here we ruthless. Go. Ruthless. Ruthless. They have no boundaries. All right. If I didn't source the mirror, the mirror. Okay. <laughs> All right. Which I know a lot of people hate because it I is know. tabloid. I was about to say. But... Oh, well, we'll see. She at first didn't answer, but he yelled through the door the reality of the situation. He said reporters will be swarming her and her family to get that first interview, and there's no way around it. So kind of like, just go ahead and give it to me, and it'll die down quicker type of thing. I'm a Brit. You're a Brit. Choose me. <laughs> We're all friends here. We're, off, we're in this together. And she's like, the fuck we are. Get the hell off my property. Yeah. But instead of telling him to F off, she did lit him in and decided to give him the interview. Because really, at this point, she knows nothing. So she's like, this will be easy. Yeah, that would be an easy interview. What happened? Right. Don't know. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you. Follow up with me and never. Yeah, that can all be on the record. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he asked about the moment she found out and... She says her son called her a couple of days ago and she hasn't slept since. He asked what she thinks happened and she said he must have hit his head in an, in an accident, got amnesia and 
has been lost ever since. But again, at this point, she knows nothing and she can't make sense of it all. And there's a lot to figure out. Then he tells her he has to show her something that he found. Oh, God. And she's like, okay, what? And he pulls out a picture of her and John in Panama taken a year and a half prior. And no. says, the game's up, Anne. Oh, I stop it. Holy shit. I know. And Anne looks at David and says, well, I guess this answers a lot of your questions. <gasps> Little did Anne know in that very moment, John was being arrested at their son's home for faking his own death. And soon she would be too, because she knew the entire time. Now, hold on. Oh, yeah, process it, process it. I... sit for a second. Let's let it sink. Let's sit on it. Well, Mirror, you did your thing. Look Holy... at Mirror. Look at Mirror doing their thing. Okay, okay. Sometimes no boundaries get shit done. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, let's go back because this is insane. First of all, John and Anne were up to their ears in debt with all these properties. Apparently, they would charge rent that didn't cover their mortgage, which... Like, oh, come listen, on. You don't have to be like Mark Cuban business mindset to know that that's not good. No, not good. Not a good plan. Not a good no. strategy. My two year old knows better. Right. Um, and to me, there seems like a very rational option to get out of this is to just freaking sell them. But they right. decided to take the easier route and um, have John fake his own death and to collect life insurance money. And he live in hiding for the rest of his life. Sure. She got more uh, with him like, dead. She what? She got more money with him dead, but not like groundbreaking. Oh, okay. She got, she got his pension from his teaching job, pension from his prison job, and a bereavement grant, which all uh -oh. totaled about 250,000 pounds, which is about 315,000 USD. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. To fake your own death, you have to be very okay not seeing anyone ever get your kids, your future grandchildren, everyone. I was going to say, remember, the kids... The kids yeah. had no idea. No. Wow, they Remember, really put them through it. That's your great. son was going to propose to his girlfriend that weekend. That huge <gasps> moment and all future moments for them, you're okay missing for an extra 250,000 pounds? What does it I say mean, about you? Everyone has a price. I guess so, apparently. It's crazy. And they own 12 properties? Sell them. You could have sold half of them and made way more than that. That's I know. Baffling. I'm confused. I'm confused. So the day of the accident, everyone's, they're not very bright. And you'll see why. Well, that's very clear. So the day of the accident, John posted up in the woods. for He parked his canoe. I don't know how he broke it. God. I mean, sorry, canoe. It's here I am. Right. I don't know how. Kayaks are very durable. I do not know how the fuck he broke it. But they, he did. And he posted up in the woods for about three weeks. Then he called Anne to make sure the family members who were visiting her in her time of mourning were gone. And they weren't. So she kind of had to shuffle everyone out, including her sons, their sons. And once they're gone, she picks them up and says he grew out his beard, he lost weight, and he acquired a limp. This is okay. his disguise. Wow. She then takes them back home where he lives. Just business as usual with Anne, except he can't go outside. There's a secret door between their house and the one next door. Remember, they own four of the cliff. Yeah. And he sneaks through there when people come over. I'm shook. This almost sounds not worth it. I, you, would, you know, it's not. Because he eventually like goes stir crazy. He's like, what am I doing? I mean, and she has to just put up this act. I mean, oh sobbing God, all the this time. grieving widow. Meanwhile, you're watching your actual family really mourn. Oh, right. You're, what is wrong with you people? Everyone it's is the worst. Baffling. It's baffling. Everyone's the worst. And this is, here's why. Well, this just is what we're saying. Really. Their sons came back all the time during those first few months, and their dad was just next door. Over oh, a year. My God. I know. It's just insane. Over a year into hiding, again, he got stir crazy and decided he needed to get out. I can't imagine. Think how crazy we all went during lockdown, except he can't get on social media. He can't do shit. He, right. I mean, oh, God. So he would actually walk the streets, mainly in winter, so that he could bundle up and no one would recognize him. But actually, someone did recognize him and even told Anne, like, I really think I saw John. He had a beard. But it really seemed to be him. And Anne's like, what? oh, no, that's, 
That's his cousin visiting. They just look exactly alike. No. <laughs> so no more going outside for you, John. John. So that, put an end to that. Like you fucked it. You almost fucked it up. No so, more walks for you. You no pay more the living room. For you. That's it. So while cooped up, he started gaming online. And this is when he started chatting with a woman named Kelly Steele from Kansas. Uh, oh. Welcome, John. After months of an emotion, not that I'm live in Kansas, but you know, the States. Yeah. After months of an emotional affair, he decided he wanted to meet her. So he walked around a cemetery to find someone who was born around the same time and found John Jones, who died at just five weeks old. Oh. Sad note, his, John Jones's actual family is still waiting on an apology for this, FYI. Hey, no apology for them? No. John <sighs> thought this was the perfect identity to steal because it was the same first name, so he wouldn't have to adapt to a new name. And this quote wouldn't ruin anyone's life. No, just reopen a wound for those poor parents. But whatever. Yeah, really. So in October 2003, six months after he was declared dead, he flies to Kansas to meet Kelly. Well, wait, where does... Sorry, what's her name? What's the wife's name? Anne. You're okay. like, these are the most common names I've <laughs> ever told a story about. John and Anne. Come on. Get it I together. know, but sorry. I just can't. So where's Anne think he's going? I don't know. I think she kind of led. I think they were like kind of at each other's throats at this point. They're kind of I sick bet. Of I bet they are. I Quite think she, like, the strain. Like, Whatever. But what? one source did say he was looking for places they could escape and just start completely new. And he, um, the States was a, was a good option. Panama was a good option. So he was okay. like, I'm going to go find, I'm going to go see this property in the United uh -huh. States. Uh, wow. He told Kelly that his wife died of cancer and that he always wanted to be a cowboy. Just to, oh. just a 60-year-old British cowboy. You know the type. Then go for it. Uh-huh. He persuaded Kelly to buy a 20-acre ranch in her name using 25,000 pounds he sent her. And she did it. But during this visit where they met the first time, something happened that she didn't like and she kicked him out. And I read somewhere that... He was changing in his room and her guest room with the door open and she walked by and saw everything and yelled at him for being inappropriate and kicked him out. But a few things on this is like I, it was an emotional affair, which leads me to believe it would have been intimate in person. So I'm confused why that would be a big deal. But yeah. maybe she found him repulsive meeting in person and just use this as an excuse. But get out. Inappropriate. Maybe on her end, it wasn't an emotional affair. Like, maybe they were just friends, and he, in his head, it was, like, very intimate. Emotional affair, he's in love. And she's like, no, I thought I was just chatting. No, get out no, of here. I, yeah, but I think there was, like, sex. I think it was sexy chats. <laughs> oh, sexy time. It's like, I think they're down to clown. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. So maybe don't she know. just she doesn't like, like that. Maybe. But, I mean, you got to know that's inappropriate. You just bought a property, and your name with his money. Come on. Yeah. But she did keep that money and ran with it. Oh. She moved her own family into that house that John persuaded her to buy with his money. Oh, How well, maybe she had kids in the house then. Oh, yeah. Maybe, he's, maybe that. And he's leaving the door that. open changing. That's the problem. Um, I was, sure. I was thinking when you said he convinced her to buy that property with money he sent her, I'm like, sounds like she's about to come out on top. She did. She, the swindler yeah. got swindled by Kelly from Kansas. What what did he expect? I mean, come on. He really put himself in that sitch. What an idiot. See, not very bright. Example number one of 97,000. That's not the first he, example, but go oh, I know. I know. He demanded his money back and sent her threatening emails. He said he had mob connections in New York, that he would kill her, kill her family. So many emails that she told him she was going to contact the FBI. And he was like, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Wait, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. No one needs How that. How about this? You keep my money and you'll never hear from me again. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Don't call the all police. Right. All right. We'll, we'll go on to plan B. Plan B is you win. <laughs> Don't call never, the police. Please do not do that. Have a nice life. Do not call the police. Do not call the authorities. Kelly later said he was the creepiest, oddest, most frightening man she had ever met. Oh, I'm yeah. like, well, and yet you were you weren't scared enough to not steal his money, so that's good. That is good. So he went back to the UK and told Anne they should move to Panama instead. <laughs> like, yeah, he's like, the hey, states aren't going to work out. <laughs> well, let's not do the states. 
States yeah. bad, Panama good. Panama good. Which is when those wheels were put into motion. She went in 2005 with them, which came back went to Anthony and Mark. I was like, I loved it. I may move there. You know, they God. utilized a service called Move to Panama to help them find property what do they to do? buy. <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those vague websites. <laughs> they use move to Panama.com to help them move find property to buy and it's actually this realtor who took their picture that got them caught it's in his office and he put it on the website as a promotion of like people relocate from all over to panama type oh. of spiel right there on the website so ann and john knew they were getting their picture taken they're like smile oh for it? yeah oh man example Oy 400 darwin's darwin's just Darwin ann darwin and her boyfriend john jones okay right it's not John hmm. Jones. Interesting. Get your shit together, people. They purchased a large plot of land in the jungle where they wanted to build a tourist park, kind of like a smaller scale Disney, which you're in over your heads again. This is what, <laughs> look, this is, this is what started the whole thing. The with, whole with thing. Plans like this. Don't stay do away that. from real estate. It's not your thing. You don't know what you're doing. If there's a huge plot of land in the jungle that's undeveloped, there's probably a reason. Just stop it. You're enough. Cut it you out. You don't have the money. He also didn't speak Spanish and would tell locals they're stupid for not speaking his language. Which, okay. Doesn't that just tell you everything you need to know about him? You're my country, just, bitch. Right. Like, I know what exactly what this guy's like. He's the one at the dinner party, like, making the stupidest, cringiest comments. Yeah. Ugh. Right. Constantly nervous laughing around this guy. Oh, oh my God. God. An idiot. You're like, I just don't want to like set it off or. Right. So I'm just, just going <sighs> to smile. And <laughs> and also, yeah, they're the stupid ones. I haven't read about anyone else allowing a realtor to put their picture on a homepage of the, his website when they're supposed to be dead. Yeah. Who's the stupid so one So if you now? can believe it, the tourist park idea fell through. Oh, no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? What happened? They don't have the money is the thing. And on top of that, a new visa law was put in place. That said, in order to live in Panama as a foreign national, you had to get a letter from your local police back home to verify your identity, prove you had no criminal record, and essentially that you're in good standing. Oh, that's not going to work. They're probably that's like, not okay, gonna work. not a that, problem. Anne could do this. John obviously could not, which is yeah. where he came up with this whole amnesia plan. According to Anne, he genuinely thought that everyone would be too happy and excited to ask any questions or look into it. Oh. Are you new? No, the opposite, especially. I'm, I'm telling you with the British tabloids, they will figure it out. Or humans in general. Have you ever met a modern day human? We are all internet sleuths. Uh -huh. And in fact, it was a random, anon it wasn't even the mirror who broke the story wide open, actually. It was a random anonymous woman who Googled the words John and Panama. And now what? that very famous picture came up on Google. Image number one. She then forwarded it to the UK police and later said she heard the story and was skeptical and thought there had to be something more about them. So she just wow. took it up with her computer because that's what we do, John. We Google everything. You that's think we true. just sit here and accept a baffling mystery? We just oh sit God. here and wonder like a cave person? <laughs> <laughs> no one is doing that. There's Everyone's no one's wondering exactly anymore. Exactly what happened and especially how you broke that damn kayak. <laughs> right because this is baffling oh my god there's no such thing as wondering anymore come on you're an idiot idiot example number 75 for real which also sucks for this anonymous person because can't you just say i bet she got all cozied up maybe got a big cup of coffee all excited <laughs> to play detective and fall into a rabbit hole and after her first google search it's over <laughs> she's like she's well like, oh. Solve that one. What else? What else took, can I do? I took all this Adderall. Now I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> exactly. Now I don't know what else to do with it. wonder if Other CC Moore needs mysteries. me to dig into any social media. <laughs> so anyway, once John was arrested and the reporter presented that picture to Anne, she willingly got on a plane back to the UK and was arrested when she landed at the Manchester airport. God. Anne Darwin is charged with 15 counts of money laundering and deception. John Darwin faced an additional charge relating to his fake passport and pled guilty and was sentenced to six years and three months in prison. Essentially, almost the amount of time he was missing for. Yeah. 
and pleaded not guilty, claiming marital coercion, but it didn't work. And she was sentenced to six years, six months, three months longer than John. Oh, wow. Yeah. They think it's because she pled not guilty. Yeah. Like if she just pled guilty, she's going to, yeah. You leave it up to a jury. It's not going to go in your favor. Sometimes, sometimes it will. Yeah. Some people do think she was coerced and just got in too deep and feel bad for her. I can see how people think that because she really didn't seem to care about money. She didn't grow up with much, but very happy childhood. She was very happy living her modest life as a receptionist. So there wasn't motive. It really does seem like she just did what her husband wanted, which is a horrible spot to be in. But I'm not sure. I can't get all the way there on that sympathy train no, for Anne. Not watching your two sons especially exactly. go through this and still having to put on like the sad grieving widow bit. No, right. Sorry. Seeing like the pure devastation, like their world crumbled. Oh and my God, I know. And Mark and Anthony, Anthony are pissed. They both made public statements about not wanting anything to do with them. Quote, yeah. it's bewildering. It's as if our whole life has been a lie. They have tarnished all the good times even before this. I can't ever forgive them for putting us through the torment of mourning. They were in it together and they deserve the sentences that was handed to them. They are just as bad as each other. Dad told one lie and disappeared, but she lied for six years. She was the face of the lie. She dragged us through hell, forcing a court case. They trampled over our lives for money. Then they called Anne a hideous lying bitch. Whoa. Oddly enough, they have since reconciled. Oh, they have? With Anne, not John. We'll get there. Oh, okay. Oh, I, whatever um, makes these two happy. I look, don't know. Right. They're you the want to reconcile? Of all of this. Do it. Mm-hmm. In prison, John told his inmates he would make millions off this story, <laughs> which didn't please, happen. Please stop. I mean, you can't profit off your crime, you dipshit. Some but places he did you can. No, some well, places you can. Oh, UK is not one of them. Well, he yeah, did okay. sell the letters Anne wrote to him to the tabloids for a quick buck. So he's so grimy. And needless to yeah. say, the love was no longer there and they got divorced in prison. Oh, no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> a love story that sours? Oh. <laughs> she and the reporter, David Lee, did end up writing a book. So I guess she made a buck off her crime. Maybe you can in the UK. Oh. Did she have restitution? I mean, maybe they took it all. Oh, uh, mm, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. maybe. I should know, shouldn't I? I don't know. Do we have any, like, international law experts out there? <laughs> or UK? Well, or if you're a lawyer in the UK, that would do. Yeah, that would do. No, I don't think we do because remember Natalie's episode. I needed to know all about um, the Netherlands law. And no well, one helped me. And none of y'all stepped up. <laughs> and we haven't forgotten it. <laughs> we forgive you. We will not forget you. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. During Anne's stint in jail, Mark did visit her once. Apparently, it was a, quote, stiff conversation, which I take it to mean service level, formal, didn't hug it yeah. out. Then Anthony visited her and brought his wife and newborn baby that Anne didn't know existed. Ouch. Mm -hmm. How gut-wrenching you think that was? You felt guilty before? Look, here's a baby whose birth you missed. Your first grandchild's birth you missed. Yeah. So. Ooh. Ouchy. But as they often do, babies soften people up. Hatred has subsided. People tend to unite for the sake of those babies. So even in bad marriages, y'all, if you ever, <laughs> if you have a rocky oh, marriage, just have a baby. Have That's a baby. Point of, it's the point of the story. Advice, of, advice from Rebecca. From Rebecca. That was Rebecca <laughs> who gave that advice. I want to make it the road easier, not harder. Totally. But this, did, this opened the door for reconciliation with her. After about three and a half years, John was released in January 2011, and Anne was released in March of 2011. John moved to Manila and married a Filipino woman 23 years younger than him, who he met online. This is where he lives today, and I gotta say, during his interrogation, he said he went to the UK police and claimed amnesia, not because of Panama's new visa law, but because he couldn't stand not seeing his kids anymore, which was Clear bullshit, because the moment he was released, he moved to another country and has pretty much not spoken to them since. He has oh never God. met his grandchildren, and he has four of them now. So, <gasps> good riddance, peace out, whatever. Oh, wow. Anne moved to a small village outside of York and worked at an animal shelter. Mark was the first son to come around, but they really had to talk things out. 
And at the beginning of all this, when they thought John was dead, Mark would often go to his mom's house and sob about everything, like pure devastation over the loss. And one of his first questions to Anne after her release was whether his dad was standing on the other side of the wall during those visits. And she <gasps> had to say yes. Oh, my God. Can you imagine facing that reality? Like, that's why I can't get on the he, sympathy train, obviously. I can't. Sorry, I can't. Good for I mean, him for for reconciling. I, I, just, I mean, honestly. No way. No. I feel bad for her. I do think she's held herself responsible. She's taken accountability. I'm I'm kind of okay with Anne at this point. But watching your kid cry in pure pain over his father's death when in reality he steps away from him. Oh, God. This was a... This was the moment where you had a decision to make. Her children or her husband. And she chose. And she chose incorrectly. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And while he's forgiven her, while Mark's forgiven her, it's shit like this. He said he will never forget. He has two kids now. So does Anthony. Anthony was harder to come around because on top of everything else, she pleaded not guilty. To him, a trial was one more thing she put them through that could have been avoided. So fair. Uh, Such yeah. a valid point. Like, yeah, just plead guilty. Very fair. Right. So it was one more thing they had to go through. But over time, as the boys got married, started having their own kids, they wanted them to have a grandmother. So they for, at first kept her at an arm's length and then invited her to Christmas so she wouldn't be alone. And now they say there's no longer an elephant in the room. Even on rare occasions, they'll joke about it. <laughs> like, Good, wow. for Good for y'all. Good for y'all. Y'all are better than I am. I would, but but even, that's one of those, they can joke about it. She cannot. Yeah. She has to bow her head and not uh, smirk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if she has a joke about it, it's six more years, no contact. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but even after forgiving her, both sons kept counsel in place for years afterwards. What? They did? Yeah, in case I Good needed it. Them. Smart. You have no... But, this, at this point, cops, those cops could be actors. That jail could be a fucking I mean, rented out storage unit. Who knows? They sound like they're more business savvy than their dumbass parents. They should have <laughs> come to them for advice. Sure. As of 2022, Mark is open to talking to his dad. Anthony is not. Can't say I blame him. John is I, I'm no doctor, but I feel like John um, exudes characteristic, characteristics of a narcissist. And if you have your own family to take care of and love, sometimes you can't be bothered with people like that. Blood relatives included. Yeah. He's not, he doesn't reach out. Have they said that? He like doesn't try anything? Um, I think maybe, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I think uh, Mark's talked to him couple times wow mm. so there you have it that is the insane story of the darwins and then this whole thing got me in a rabbit hole of some other interesting stories do you remember olivia newton john's boyfriend yes i, I don't remember think, what i never knew that. what happened to him did you he he was missing for a long time well i knew that i remember breaking news he's missing was at there sea. a boat he was a yeah he was going to catalina or something he was on a boat right oh there you go right well uh, let, really let me, let me explain it to you people oh okay Patrick McDermott was a cameraman who disappeared on June 30th, 2005, while on an overnight fishing trip off the coast of L.A. Mm -hmm. in California. I think it was actually Catalina, but I don't remember. He dated actress Olivia Newton-John. In 2009, Dateline did a story on it, and investigators set up findpatrickmcdermott.com for anyone who had tips. And they noticed this one IP address was constantly going to the website. Oh. They were already a little suspicious of him, so they tracked it down and went to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, and there he was, living as Pat Kim. What? Allegedly. And I say allegedly what? because people like his ex-wife say it's mistaken identity, and they can't find him again. Uh, oh. Uh -huh. he, so Pat Kim's gone? Pat Kim's gone. But uh, there's no, I did not know that Allegedly part. been at least 20 sightings of him since then, too, but no one can find him. I didn't know that was... I remember him being missing. Is that crazy? I was like, that's sad. That's crazy. I love Puerto Vallarta. I know. Me too. Wait. Wow. Uh-huh. So he's out there. Has Olivia Newton-John ever spoken out about this? Well, you know, she's dead. But I know, but she wasn't then. There, She did do interviews about it. I don't know. I couldn't get in too far of a rabbit hole. I really wanted to, but we did have oh, well, to do don't this worry recording. About it. Yeah, don't I'm worry about to. it. I'm already on Google, so don't worry about it. I know. Um, his ex-wife is like, no, he's not alive. But everyone's like, but, mm, yes, he is. And how did investigators find... of Dateline are like, yes, he is. Um, he was okay. apparently in debt and he just wanted to run away from it. Yeah. How did they find Pat Kim in Puerto Vallarta and then he slipped away again? Um, okay. And are there pictures of him? Did, did they show the ex-wife? Like, how is she so certain? 
I think people have taken pictures of him. There's that's also on Google. You're just gonna have to look it up. I'm just, I don't, just don't worry about it. Oddly enough, Patrick McDermott wasn't my story today. It was John Darwin. But well, uh, you can't just drop this bomb and then be like, I don't know. Google it. That's my next story. My next story. I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna tell you all about this. I'm gonna Patrick tell y'all, McDermott. Like, literally, yeah, literally one sentence, and then be like, Google the rest, <laughs> and then we're gonna put 15 ad breaks in it. <laughs> don't y'all love that? I don't know how he slipped away. Apparently, it's not illegal to just run away. You can do it. Your no, debt's piling up. But if Dateline investigators found him and he said, no, it's not me. Remember, there's a documentary being like, are you the, oh, oh, the guy you told who jumped out of the plane. Oh, D.B. Cooper. D.B. Oh, Cooper. So the like guy that. living in San Diego. Exactly. I, got, I was convinced. So they're like, are you him? No. Okay, bye. Like, <laughs> I don't know. They just, they can't do much with it. Um, apparently, well, adults apparently it's can... only illegal when you start cashing out on it. So and I don't, to my knowledge, think he has. He's just like, it's like just one big argument oh. of whether he's alive or whether he's not. Kind of like D.B. Cooper. Cashing uh, out on it, like collecting insurance. And yeah, like collecting debt. insurance, oh, yeah, yeah. doing shit like that. But you can't, you can just run away from debt legally. Like I know an adult yeah, and he's, can up and, and Pat leave. Pat his birth name. Patrick McDermott's a stage name. So he's like, I just, it just went back to his, he's not stealing anyone's identity. So I'm like, right, All but. Right. You can just run away from your debts. Great. Everyone with student yeah, loans. Yeah, I do it every month. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's yeah. true. Ask my Barclay card. I do it every month. <laughs> hey, that's good advice. If you have student <laughs> loans, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Hey, I, I, I definitely run. Ask Sally Mae. God damn. <laughs> A detective who solely investigates people who fake their death, which <laughs> epic job was on, but, I think. What? They only investigate people suspected of faking their deaths? Yes. Like, how do you know? Oh, my God. That's interesting. I wonder what the... Um, how crazy is that? What the rate of, like, investigations he's given? What's the rate of... Oh, yeah. They're faking their death. Oh, that'd be interesting. That's it... on his website. And I can't remember his name. But he's on oh. the episode of Phoebe Judges Criminal about oh, okay. this. And they said the best way to... Do, she's like, so how would you... Like, if you were to give advice on someone who wants to fake their death, who how would they do it? Because they were... The two experts on there were like, everyone always goes lost at sea. And they think it's a good idea because oh. the ocean's a big place. And it's not. It's actually highly suspicious. The way to do it oh, okay, is to go on a hike. It's open-ended. No one knows what happened. You could die of exposure, a wild animal, a yeah. drowning, a fall. No one knows. It's way too open-ended. And they also said men are way more likely to fake their death than women, which is interesting. No, that kind of makes sense. Makes sense. Um, I actually don't know how they know that. I got women are just better at it. Men are the ones who get caught. Uh, yeah. So they're like, men do it. I'm like, maybe women do it too. We're just don't but, flap our gums about it. Yeah, we don't get caught. Um, we don't I, take pictures on a fucking website for a well, website. Well, Anne does. Anne Darwin does. Well, she that wasn't faking so, her death. Oh, right. That is so Isn't interesting. interesting. Go on a hike, people. <laughs> just advice after advice from Rebecca. <laughs> Ditch your good debt. after good good advice if you're having marital issues throw a baby into the mix <laughs> and go on a hike if you want to fake your death that's it and be be sure you're okay with not talking to your loved ones again because he said that's how people get caught they contact someone their mother on their birthday is the example we gave people call their mother on their birthday every year and they think that and the mother's not going to tell anyone but people around them are like who is she on the phone with and they get suspicious and they are not loyal to you. So they will go to the authorities. Yeah. And now your mom's wrapped in on this. And you right. just sent her into a tailspin on her birthday. <laughs> Dick. Oh, my God. This is Isn't crazy. It fascinating. It's reminiscent of another case we've covered before. But I won't say the name because I know people start with new and work their way back. And I do not want to ruin that one. It yeah, is. that was a solid. Oh, God. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So something to look forward to if you don't know what I'm talking about. And you only have a hundred episodes to listen to to figure it out. You'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. Crazy, huh? Wow. Patrons. Candace, Haley, Rachel, Fiona, Katie, Johanna, Claudia, JJ, and MK. Welcome, everyone. Wow. Hey, we thank y'all. Thank y'all. We have one custom shout out from Jennifer. I'd like to shout out my good friend, Kyla. She's actually the one who introduced me to the podcast. Hey. Okay. Hey, Kyla. You're a girl. You're a girl, Blue. <laughs> she was my work friend out of college 
at my first big girl job and I've cherished our friendship ever since. She took me under her wing and I'll forever be grateful for that. You always will. For those friends who do that. Best so friend nice. at work. Best friend at work. Work friends. Love you, girl. We love you too. Keep telling for people. For real. Keep telling people. Thanks, everyone. Thank y'all. Y'all are the best. People are the worst. Bye-bye. Bye.